So, a very good evening and a warm welcome to 6.30 Praise. Yeah, hello everyone and welcome. It's so great to be back with you tonight. It certainly is. And you now come to the final instalment of our sermon series, which has been exploring discovering joy through Jesus. Yeah, it's been a really great series, I think. And this week is going to be a little bit different, where myself and Justin are going to lead you through a bit of a reflection over what we've heard from the last eight weeks and as we will delve a little bit deeper into the final chapter of the book of Philippians. Yeah, kind of titled Joy in Giving and Learning to be Content. Oh, how lovely. Um, so before we kind of worship together and sing together, uh, why don't we start off with a prayer? Yeah, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and to praise you. Lord, we thank you all for, for each other and for who we are and how we enrich each other's lives. Be with us, Lord, as we go step by step in our daily lives and help us to notice those moments you're with us, those moments we are those shining lights for others. Be with us now and just calm our thoughts and our minds. Open our hearts so that we might hear your word, Lord. We thank you for the diversity in our communities. And we really just pray into that, Lord, that we can really come together and start to shape our futures, futures of church, family, workplaces, everything, with you at the heart of it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of And as you speak A heart your billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form If the stars were made to worship so loud I can see See? 
So before we start with tonight's reading, let's just take an opportunity just to remind ourselves of the journey that we've undertaken over the last eight weeks. And remember, the, the message within the Philippians was written by Paul, who um, was in prison at the time. And he was evidently in prison because he was preaching the word. Um, and that in itself seems crazy in modern times, but evidently that still happens within this world that we live in. But he was writing to obviously the first church that was formed within Europe um, in Philippi and he was writing to the, his followers and people that were learning from him at the time. Um, obviously he was writing it at a point where he didn't know if he was going to live or die. He was obviously not living in a, in a lovely prison that maybe modern day context would be in now. And so life was incredibly challenging and difficult for him but he managed to put pen to paper and write uh, this truly amazing letter that explored an awful lot and over the last eight weeks we've had an awful lot of content that was really embedded within that letter that has so much message and mission within it. Absolutely and what I've really, what we've also heard from this series is uh, how Paul was able to look for and experience and find the joy throughout it all. So from week on week we've heard about uh, the joy in the good news of Jesus, joy in following in Christ's example, joy in the fellowship of God's mission, and joy in the Lord and in the power of resurrection. 
we've also explored joy in the citizenship of heaven. Mm. And joy in putting the Christian life into practice. So tonight we're going to look at the final part of the letter, uh, which has a kind of an overarching feel of the joy in uh, giving and, and learning to be uh, content. Yeah, shall I read the, the hmm. chapter that we're talking about first of all? So this is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through to 23. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is more be credited to your account. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Ephroditus the gifts you sent. They are fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs, according to the riches of his glory in Jesus Christ. To God, to our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Greet all God's people in Jesus Christ. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings. All God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Lately I've been really watching the nightly news. Don't seem to find the rhythm, just wanna sing the blues. Feels like a song that never stops. Feels like it's never gonna. Gotta get that fire, fire back in my bones before my heart, heart turns into stone. Choose time. 
joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. What an end into the chapter. Yeah, definitely. I think, like we've said, that, that there was so much content within the letter itself. And even on its final element, where it is to say thank you for the support that the Philippians have given Paul, um, there were still some words of wisdom and so much to learn from those final few verses. Yeah, absolutely. And it came across to me that Although it is a a thank you from yeah. Paul, um, it's it's also about continuing to share examples and you know ways of life, ways of doing things, yeah. and and to share the story and the reasoning why behind it. So it's not just oh yeah, thanks for that, but you know to go further and say you know. Be content, be content with gifts, yeah. giving and receiving. I think from our research we've discovered that Paul has lived the highs and the lows of life and he, I think, shares that within the text to say that, you know, he is aware of what it's like to have plenty and is also really aware of what it's like to have nothing. And I think that's kind of where he is now, but I think he relates to previous times when he has had nothing because we know this isn't his first imprisonment. Um, and I think we, we get a very strong feel from his text that he is very thankful and has been reliant on the gifts from the the, the, the Philippians. Um, and I think um, that comes across like he's very thankful, but putting it into context of being thankful for the gifts. Yeah, and also that message in there for Christians to to give and receive and to be happy with that and con content with that yeah it's not and to go about it from from the right place yeah so it, it's not to go and and give somebody the best spend the most money and give somebody gifts in that way as yeah. such but anything that you may can give or share you don't really know how that's going to land and sit with somebody. Yeah. I think he uses this great term, which is the, the, the secret of being content. Uh, and I think, I think we can all relate to that at times, that we, sometimes we just probably need to reflect on, actually, we are content with the rhythm and what life is at the moment. It sometimes can be quite challenging when life is difficult and life is challenging, but actually we need to draw upon the strength of our belief and the draw upon the strength of our God to believe that actually this is this is our time right now that we need to be content that there is a direction and life will get better. Um, we learned a lot about the idea of being um, citizens of heaven uh, a couple of weeks ago and, and, and that 
it, it affects us right now that we need to know that living as a Christian, living in God's word, living like Jesus, um, no matter how difficult life is, we need to draw on the fact that we need to feel trusted that we can be secretly content with the way things are right now so we can move forward. And it's placing that trust and faith in God yeah. that God's got this covered. Yeah. God's got a plan and that he will provide for us. Yeah. We don't we may not know exactly how that might turn out or what that's going to look like. But those little gifts or from others or offerings we give to others is exactly that, I think. We that is us living it out and I think, you know, we've got a really good example that's really touched us both, hasn't it, from our our time through COVID. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, we use the word gifts in the context of this story as as money. And evidently, you know, um, Paul needed the money to get through life and to help him financially. I think he even relates to the time when he was going through church and through to spread the word where he received no monetary support from those churches, but got them from uh, the close people within Philippi. But within our world, I think, you know, we've all lived quite a challenging 18 months um, and then during our time as as workers for the National Health Service, um, there were times where it was just despair. Uh, we were exhausted, and then the whole concept of our commitment and responsibility as parents was also significantly challenging. But one little gift that became such a blessing and gave us such joy every week was fellow brothers and sisters who felt that actually cooking a meal once a week for us and sometimes even twice a week brought us such joy and it fulfilled us but not because it filled me tummy but it fulfilled us because it felt that we were still part of a community um, and brought us such joy. Absolutely and I think um, that was some really big lessons if you like for me at that time uh, I would never have dreamed of asking for so asking for help at all or asking for anything because I don't know it's just it's just not really I guess a bit too proud I mm. guess but for people out there to just offer it just mm. knock on the door with a meal that was incredible and initially I felt a little bit like oh okay yeah. I can feed my family but yeah. it was completely more than that it wasn't that it was just other people wanting to help us yeah. and, and help us by feeding us in turn we were then to go and conti able to continue with our jobs or yeah. and um that for me was a real true lesson and learning of how simple a gift can be yeah. to share with others and the impact that it has one thing that took me aback even more so from that was our want and need to thank the people that were helping us, uh, the wanting to need to uh, kind of reciprocate and give something back to thank them. But they, they wouldn't have anything of it. In fact, it really plays into this little bit, doesn't it? Where actually there is a massive amount of joy to be had in the physical ability to give a gift. Um, and in this case, it was food. And in Paul's case, it was money. But let's be honest, guys. Let's reflect right now on some of the skills that we have uh, that we've learned over the last 18 months or maybe skills that we've already well established that how much joy it brings to give uh, a gift of time or your talent uh, to others and what joy that brings you but actually ironically it also mirrors back that that joy is brought by others too so isn't that a beautiful way of actually saying that it, there is so much joy in giving that actually both people end up being content if anything um, in that process yeah, the giving and the receiving is, I think the, the outcomes are equal in that point, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, 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 definitely. And then the kind of, the, the final bit was to kind of looking at kind of verses 18 and 19, which is about that being content even when things are challenging. You know, life wasn't a picnic for Paul at this point. You know, life was challenging and actually that is... I think probably is a challenge for us all, isn't it? To actually, when when we are down and out, or when we've got life is challenging, that we reflect on the fact that we should be just as content with that situation when when life is really good and we're really joyful. Um, and and I think that that 
has to come from us reflecting on the fact that using the power of prayer, kind of centering ourselves to God's way uh, and having that relationship with God probably allows us to re-emphasize the fact that we're not alone in these circumstances. We've got God with us at all times. Um, and we need to be content that no matter how life difficult how life is at the moment, there is a there is a way out of this. Or Absolutely. this is the journey. And that there's still hope. Yeah. I think, you know, God doesn't promise that life's gonna be easy but no. he has got our back and you know, we will find a way through. Yeah. I think that is also a really important message and, and really more so at the moment coming out of this pandemic because it, it has become, you know, easy to kind of think, well, how are we going to find a way out of this? What what are we going to do? My whole life has been turned upside down. What What do we do out of this? And it is that going back to, stripping it all back really, going back to basics of your faith and... Trusting and believing in God, yeah. holding on to that he will provide and that he is there for us. And so looking, and as Paul has spoken about in his letters as well, with prayer and, and you know, rejoicing and praising in the Lord. And there will be ups and downs. Yes. Absolutely. But with those things in place and, and finding our joy and sharing our joy with others, it's, it's about sharing our gifts and joy and yeah, everything in between really to find our way through and, and along with our community because that mm. is such an important part of our of so Christian valuable. faith, isn't so it? It's not, about, it's not about me as an individual or you as an individual, it is about us and, and us as a community and, and that extends to you as well. Um, mm. And together with God. I think then it finishes right on the end with a couple of verses that talks about the power of greeting and saying hello and greeting others. And I think we sometimes take that for granted. I think we are a society, aren't we, with our heads down in our mobile phones or heads down because we don't want to uh, cross eyes with other people because we're afraid that we'll upset them. But actually, wow, isn't it such a beautiful gift that we have to... Just say hello to people, to our fellow brothers and sisters, but even people that may be not as close to the church as we uh, would like them to be. Uh, just reaching out and saying, hello, good morning, how are you? Um, I think that's a, that's a gift we can give every day. That, do you know what? I can reflect on that sometimes, actually, just by A, saying hello to somebody. I know it brings joy to them, but also someone just taking the time to say, Good morning, Justin. How are you? I'm great. And maybe that's all you need, but sometimes it's just having that interaction, which, let's be honest, over the last 18 months has been quite scarce with other people. But I think if we can do that, I mean, we're giving a gift away every day, which is great. Yeah, that's very true. Or even just a smile, if there's not time for a hello. Just a smile. <laughs> just being aware of other people that are around you and reaching out for those interactions again. So... Moving away from this passage and, and reflecting on the entire letter, I think there's a lot to learn and I think if you have time, go back to your Bible and, and, and read that letter again in the context of what we've learned uh, over the last eight weeks. Uh, and with this week in mind, just maybe reflect on how much joy giving can be so two-sided that both people can enjoy by you giving and them also receiving and vice versa. And maybe reflect on the fact that even when times are good and times are bad, then we have a degree of content knowing that there's a direction, there's a path from there. And that is something that both Tron and I can set you as a task uh, for the next week. Back when I was a kid, I thought gifts from God only came from church But the more that I live, the more I learn It's not always the way it works Sometimes you don't see it till you're looking back When you didn't get what you thought you had to have Cause he had a bigger plan than the one you had Yours didn't work out, and aren't you glad? When you take a look around, it ain't hard to find Everybody's got things and money can't buy if the ones you love are sitting right beside you Then I'd say you gotta lie The best things in life are straight from his hands Like a raising kids on a piece of land A little piece of
Let's join together for the prayer of the day. God our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So that brings us to the end of our sermon series, Discovering Joy Through Jesus. Yeah, I really hope that you've enjoyed this evening and enjoyed us trying to take you through and give you some reflections and, and little challenges to think about over the next week. But this, yeah, is the end of this current series. Yeah, a big thank you to everyone who's taken part in contributing, kind of eking out the detail within this letter. It's been really thought-provoking. I've certainly really enjoyed looking at the letter and, and, and really learning from you all. So uh, thank you, everyone who contributed. Yeah. We look forward to the next series. Yeah, which starts next week. And in theory, it's our last sermon series before we start even thinking about coming back together again. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the book of kind of Timothy, uh, which is going to be quite exciting uh, and, and very informative as well. So should be good. So uh, if you are watching us live this evening, then you can join us on our Zoom after the service. And if you click on the notes section and you'll find the link to that right there, we'll be there. Do come along. Um, it's just a place that we can just, you know, catch up with people, see how they're doing, and if you've got any discussion points or mm. questions about this evening, then we will be there. There's lots of news within the Parish of Yate, which we're not going to repeat it again, because you, if you come to our face-to-face -face service or watch it online, uh, then you would have caught up with a little bit of, of it. But uh, if you want to keep in touch with what's going on, there's a great newsletter, uh, there's lots of emails, and there's lots of information on our social media space, uh, and of course on our website. So please do go there, because there's lots going on uh, over the next couple of weeks, uh, and of course a kind of a... A fond farewell, but also a very sad farewell to Gail. Uh, and there's lots of activities just to celebrate her time with us. So um, uh, please do go on our website um, and then connect with that because there's some great stuff going on there too. Um, but yeah, no, really good, really good indeed. Even Rusty's going to be there at the Zoom <laughs> later, I think, which is great. So that's it from us this week. We hope you guys have a wonderful week. As ever, uh, if you do need to reach out for us uh, to us uh, for any help, any support or prayer requests, then please do so. Uh, the information to do that will be on our website. Yeah, and otherwise, I think that's it from us this week. And so take care, everyone, and we'll see you next time. See you next week.